As we prepare our hearts for the scripture today, I will share a prayer that we may understand scripture. Let us pray. God of the seeking heart, we search for truth in a world filled with hidden agendas. Send us your Holy Spirit to guide us to the treasures hidden in your word. For the sake of Christ, who is the way, the truth, and the life for us. Amen. Our scripture reading today is from the Gospel of Luke, chapter 5, verses 12 through 16. And we're continuing our sermon series on pilgrimage with Jesus. And I wanted to include some stories that involve Jesus healing people, because that's so much a part of his ministry. So this is a story of Jesus healing a man with leprosy. Hear now God's word to us. Once, when he was in one of the cities, a man covered with a skin disease was there. When he saw Jesus, he bowed with his face to the ground and begged him, Lord, if you are willing, you can make me clean. Then Jesus stretched out his hand, touched him, and said, I am willing, be made clean. Immediately the skin disease left him, and he ordered him to tell no one. But go, show yourself to the priest, and as Moses commanded, make an offering for your cleansing as a testimony to them. But now, more than ever, the word about Jesus spread abroad. Many crowds were gathering to hear him and to be cured of their diseases. Meanwhile, he would slip away to deserted places and pray. This is the word of God. Please pray with me. Jesus, we are so grateful for your healing ministry. We are so grateful for the way that you would draw close to people and care for them and show compassion to them. Thank you that you do that for us. Thank you that you invite us to do that for others. Open our hearts to learn from this story today, we pray. In the name of Christ, amen. I want to tell a couple stories connected to leprosy today. And one of the things that we know about leprosy is that it's a chronic progressive bacterial infection, and it affects the nerves of extremities, producing skin ulcers, nerve damage, and muscle weakness. We've heard leprosy defined before. It's now called Hansen's disease. And for many, many years, there was not much treatment for leprosy. And in the days of Jesus, of course, it was very common, and people were viewed as unclean if they had leprosy, and they had to live separately from others. And that continued throughout history in various parts of the world. One of the stories that I want to share with you come from, comes from my time in Dublin this summer. Karen, the girls, and I went to Dublin, Ireland, and we visited a church where Karen's aunt, um, or Karen's cousin, lived, and also her aunt and uncle worked in mission work. It was St. Mark's Church in Dublin, Ireland. And when we went there, we weren't sure we would get a chance to even go inside, but there was a pastor named Pastor Des, and he uh, actually knew Karen's family, and so it was really fun. He led us into this old church, St. Mark's Church. It was a Church of Ireland church, which is the, you know, the, the main church of the, of the country, but then over time, it became a Pentecostal church, an Assembly of God church, because Karen comes from an Assembly of God background. So that church has a powerful ministry right now. Hundreds of people are coming every week to worship. And they remodeled everything from the inside. And we were praying with Pastor Des. We were talking to him about his ministry. It was really exciting. And at one point, as he's showing us around, he takes us to this hidden doorway and he opens it up, and there is a stone stairway that goes up to the top of this really old building. And he says, this is a really special place, because what happened in the 1700s is we would have people come to this church, when it was the Church of Ireland, and they would be, uh, have leprosy, and they would be guided up these steps so that they could participate in worship. Now, when we hear that, that may sound like they were segregated, but what they were were actually included because in those days it was actually rare 
to provide a space in a church for people who had leprosy. So that because of what they knew about the disease, they decided to give them an opportunity to come to the balcony. And I thought that was really powerful that he could show that to us. And he said he continues to do a ministry that cares for people who are on the margins today. He continues to reach out to people, for example, who struggle with drug addiction or houselessness. And so he's always reminded, because of the history of the church caring for people with leprosy, that he needs to do the same kind of ministry today. So that was an impactful uh, story that Des told us. Another story I want to tell you comes from our very own Mary Kalesi. Mary, I'm going to get a little prop for this one. Mary spent some time in... Chiang Mai, Thailand, um, Mary and Armand, and when they went, they visited an island called McKean Island, and it's named after Dr. James McKean, who was a missionary in Thailand who cared for people with leprosy, and he helped support communities of folks that had leprosy. He helped treat them as a doctor. Eventually, treatment improved, Again, by the early 1980s, there was actually antibiotics to help cure the disease of leprosy. But still in that part of the world, there are communities of folks who had family who had leprosy. And, and then even after some treatment happened, it was hard to go back into society. So a community formed of people who either had leprosy or had been cured of it, but stayed connected to their family members. And these folks on that McKean Island now do wonderful woodworking. And it's hard to see this. I'm actually going you know, to, since I got my mic here, I'm going to walk it through to you. A little show and tell. What you can see in this woodworking is a beautiful person being cared for by a, a hand. And to me, it symbolizes, and for Mary, it symbolizes the touch of God's love, the touch of Jesus, to comfort and show compassion to people with leprosy. Isn't that beautiful? So Mary gifted that to us, and it's special, and I often use it in times of prayer to remind myself of God's compassion for me and for others. So feel free to check this out later. And even as I came in today, um, Ron was telling me of Father Damien, who provided care for people with leprosy in the, in the place called Molokai in the Hawaiian Islands, Molokai. So there's so much history of people caring for folks with leprosy, and it's been part of the mission of the church and other groups for years. And in our story today, again, we know that this man who comes to Jesus is actually risking a lot. He's not supposed to come up to someone and ask to be healed in that way. Jesus is not supposed to touch this man. He's viewed by society as unclean. He's Jewish. He's part of the Jewish community in the sense that his religious background is Jewish, but he himself is ostracized from the normal Jewish community because of his illness, of his disease. But he goes ahead and seeks out Jesus. He puts his face to the ground and begs Jesus, if you are willing, you can make me clean. Jesus responds with a heart of compassion. I imagine he looks directly into the man's eyes and touches his skin, gently saying, I am willing, be made clean. The man is amazingly healed. His skin becomes clear and Jesus gives him directions to go to the priest, show him his skin, make an offering and be cleansed. Jesus gives these directions in order for the man to be restored to the Jewish community as a healthy person who is clean. Jesus tells the man to not tell anyone that Jesus healed him, but word gets out, as it often does with Jesus, that Jesus is healing people, and more people come to him. Jesus finds ways and found ways away in this time to slip out from the crowd to a deserted place in order to pray. So this is a, a wonderful story, and I want to talk about three things from this story that seem powerful to me. The first thing is that the man begs Jesus to heal him. This shows he has faith that Jesus can heal. He takes responsibility to seek out Jesus for his healing. In our own prayer lives, how often do we fall before Jesus in prayer 
and seek him to heal us or to respond to some need in our lives or the world? Do we seek an intimate encounter with Jesus? Do we seek healing or instead do we often walk through life not even pursuing an encounter with Jesus? Some people don't even know that it's possible to experience Jesus today. And I want to share, if you need any healing in your life, remember to pursue Jesus and ask for his touch of healing for yourself or someone you love. And my wife would want to say, remember to talk to us after church and we'll pray for you as well. And there are other people that will pray for you. So I love the way this man seeks out Jesus. He's just bold. And there are so many stories of bold people that go up to Jesus. They know he's going to be able to do something. And he, they reach out and they ask for a touch from God or touch from Jesus. So the second powerful thing in this story is that in response to the request implied in this statement, if you are willing, you can make me clean, Jesus says, I am willing, be made clean. Jesus responds. So the man has faith to step out and ask for healing. Jesus responds. And Jesus actually heals the man. Jesus heals the man with leprosy. He shows compassion. He's not afraid to touch the man. This is a remarkable story, and it suggests that Jesus responds to our cries for healing and offers comfort and a heart of compassion for us. This story shows how God is by nature loving to the vulnerable. The question we must ask ourselves is, are we willing to cry out to Jesus and to trust that he will bring us the healing we need? The healing might be comfort from grief. It could be healing from a broken relationship. It could be emotional or physical healing. And I'll pause here and and say what I often say when we talk about healing There is some mystery in this. Not everyone gets healed that we pray for healing for. I get it. That's a question we often struggle with, with God. We don't really get a great answer to that question. But what I will say is we want to still seek God's healing. And then when we don't see healing happen the way we hope, we actually ask for comfort for that as well. But this this call of Jesus to come and bring compassion to people. We need to remember that. We need to remember it's in his nature to bring comfort and compassion and healing to our lives. The third part of the story is that Jesus reconnects the man with community. We all need community. Isolation and loneliness are unfortunate circumstances for many people. We as the church get to offer the community that people so desperately need. We get to offer that. As Jesus reconnects the man's community, Jesus then finds some time to escape into nature to pray. Jesus finds strength from his Father in heaven in solitude, but in this story, he also helps a man move from loneliness to community. I love the stories of Jesus healing the sick like the man with leprosy because these healings remind us of the power of Jesus and his compassion for the world. Jesus reveals to us that God's nature is compassionate and loving. And it also reminds us of the power of community. This week I was driving around town and realized that I was nearly out of gas. Do you ever have that happen where the red light shows up and you're like, I know I'm in Newburgh, but I better get to a gas station. So I went to one of our local gas stations. And since we are in Oregon, and I like this about Oregon, a nice gentleman came up to the window and offered to pump my gas. I asked him how he was doing, and he said that he was a little tired and that someone had actually treated him rather poorly that day. He told me the story of what happened, and I told him I was sorry. He went on to share that a lot of people look at him as a lowly gas attendant who has not done anything in his life, but that actually he was a firefighter for more than 10 years and he saved people's lives. He used to run into buildings in order to help people escape from fires. So I thanked the man for his service and for his help taking care of me that day. He seemed grateful for our conversation. I share this story because in our lives, we will encounter people who may feel underappreciated. All we need to do is to be present with people 
as Jesus did for the man with leprosy. Sometimes the major healing people need is just being seen and being appreciated. Paul Landis, where are you, Paul? You're out there somewhere. There you are. Paul Landis is one person in our church that does this extremely well. He reminds our men's fellowship often that showing kindness to strangers can make all the difference. If you, if you see Paul and Fred Meyer, he'll be the guy that comes up to you and greets you with a smile. So thank you for that, Paul. Everyone needs to be seen. We all need community. Loneliness is real, and a kind word and a compassionate listening ear can often provide the healing that people need. I wonder if you know someone who needs your presence of compassion and love. I wonder if you might be feeling like the man with leprosy and need someone to come to you with kindness. Yesterday, I had the privilege of sharing an encouraging message on love from 1 Corinthians 13 for the wedding of Tom and Angela. They had a small private wedding with just some friends and family for the most part. And when I spoke to Tom and Angela, my simple reminder, and it's really a reminder for any relationship, was that the key to a healthy relationship is maintaining deep connection. Being fully present and kind with a spouse, friend, or even stranger will provide the gift of connection that can help love to be fully known. In our walk with God, this is why prayer is so important. Prayer is our tangible way to be present with God. Every day we are invited to look into the face of Jesus and share our hearts, and Jesus, like he did with the man with leprosy, will look into your face and say, I am willing, I love you, I offer you healing, I offer you myself. Sometimes I finish a message and then God gives me a little something extra to share from my heart. So I'm going to do that again. One of the things that God has been putting on my heart lately is that I need to grow out of something that I was raised with. And what I was raised with in my attitude to other people is that there were Christian folks and then there were secular folks. You know that word secular? If you look it up, it means non-religious. And you grow up, as a Christian boy I grew up, and I knew there was Christian music, yay Amy Grant, Michael W. Smith, Sandy Patty for some people. There was Christian schools. There were Christian shows, Christian movies. And then there were the secular shows. There, were the secular, there was the secular music. There were secular schools. And I knew, you know, that didn't necessarily mean negative because secular just meant non-religious. But at the same time, I sort of was a little suspect when I heard something was secular. There were even secular people. And what's changing for me now at this stage of my life is that I don't see people in those categories. I don't think Jesus ever created categories for people like this. I don't think Jesus looked at the man with leprosy and said, oh, you're a leper. You're in that group. I'll stay away from you. No, Jesus saw a child of God. And that's what I kind of want to wake us up to maybe. Maybe we can do that in this church a little bit, stretch it a little bit. Could we look at a person from another religion, a person who might identify as atheist, a person who might identify as agnostic, Could we look at other people not as the other or as the secular person maybe, but rather as a child of God, created in the image of God, dare I say a person that has the light of Christ, as we've learned from the Quaker community? And how would that change how we approach people? Could we have a perspective that Jesus had and has, where we just see everybody as a child of God, And then maybe we can see the world more through the lens of its sacredness, of its beauty, of its goodness. That doesn't mean there isn't evil, there isn't sin. No, that's not what I'm saying. I'm saying the deepest nature of humanity, the deepest nature of creation is good and is part of God's creation. And when you see it that way, you don't put people in categories. You don't judge them. You instead love them. And it's actually the best way to reveal Jesus 
because you actually walk into relationships with kindness and compassion and a, a listening heart willing to learn and awaken to what another person might be able to share with you. You'll, your perspective will awaken. You'll actually know God better. So I just invite you to play around with that in your prayer and your reflection today. Could we move out of our categories? Could we be more like Jesus and love everybody and then reveal him more effectively in the world because we haven't classified people, we haven't judged people? It actually will lead to more people knowing Jesus than less. And with that heart, then, let us pray. Jesus, thank you. Thank you for the perspective that I think you had on earth that you're teaching me and teaching our church, maybe teaching our world more and more, that everything is sacred when we look through your lens, when we look through the lens of compassion, we, when we look for the beauty in creation, when we, when we look to bring help to people, not, not from a perspective of judgment, but from a heart of holiness. Help us to have your eyes, help us to be willing to reach out and touch people who are in need of comfort and healing and community. Help us to be a safe place for anyone that feels lonely, who feels like their needs are being neglected. Holy Spirit, bring your healing power here. Bring your comfort here. Help us to continue to pray. Help us to encounter you, Jesus. Help us not to live life as if you're not real, but help us instead to look for you, even beg you to reveal yourself to us and to come and comfort us. And then let us be changed, transformed, so that we can be your healing agents in our world. We pray this in the mighty name of our compassionate Lord. Amen.